are things that transcend any one of us individually. We're different parties, we're different genders, we're different colors, we're different ages. We come from different socioeconomic backgrounds, but we're all Americans. I believe that honoring our veterans is too important to let it go, and we need to celebrate every year and grow our celebration every year. We want to create more events all across our city so veterans could tell their stories and give veterans access to programs that might help them get jobs, training, health care, housing, whatever assistance our veterans could need. Now in its third year, the Week of Valor consists of nine days of activities from November 4th to the 13th in an expanded list of 14 events. The activities include a wide variety of educational, patriotic, community, and civic activities. So we ask everyone across the community to come out and recognize, support, and honor our veterans. A lot of businesses have free um, meals, give discounts. This is a little different. This is a way for the community to really stand up and recognize that our veterans serve. All of us from KET, we're truly honored to be a part of this and to be able to tell the story through the Kentucky veterans of the Vietnam War in their own words. And we're so glad that each of you all are here this evening in this glorious Kentucky Science Center. Isn't it wonderful? It's the best state-of-the-art in all of America. So we're very proud and grateful to be able to do this premiere here with you this evening. And now let's take a look at the film, KET's Kentucky Veterans of the Vietnam War in their own words. On March 8, 1965, the United States landed 3,500 troops of the Marine Corps at the port of Da Nang on the northeast coast of South Vietnam. This is our third annual Veterans Job Fair. This year we decided to hold it at the hospital. This is an area of comfort for a lot of our vets. And we're doing it on the Mayor's Week of Valor and really trying to give back to veterans. We have a lot of veterans who are unemployed and underemployed. And veterans bring a special and unique skill set and really have skills from their time and service. So we've got 25 employers here. Part of our initiative as a company nationwide is to have 20% of our staff employed by veterans of the United States military. They're great employees to have and they're great role models for some of the younger generation that we do employ now. Last year we had about 185 veterans come through so we're hoping this year to top that and hopefully be at about 200 or more. We're very excited that we were selected and be able to be part of this wonderful week where we can give back and be a part of all the different community events that are really trying to pay homage to our vets who have served. Now is the winter of our discontent. Shakespeare's Veterans is one of the newest programs of Kentucky Shakespeare. It was started by uh, the producing artistic director Matt Wallace and Fred Johnson, who's a retired colonel from the U.S. Army. Thank, Thank you for your service. There are about 15 to 25 of us, depending on the week, and we talk. We talk about what's going on, we talk about their experiences, we talk about their lives, um, and then we read Shakespeare. Shakespeare is all about war, and it's people coming home from war, and. Uh, we just really enjoy doing it and then we've gotten so much feedback when we've done one of the shows that it's, it's just, uh, it, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up sometimes what the folks say and relate to you. I love every opportunity I can think of just to hang out with groups of veterans and this is such a diverse group. Rehearsal is really where the magic happens. Performance is great too, uh, but a lot of the great work of this program I think happens during the weekly sessions. I went around all my life saying to be or not to be and I had no idea that Cap was talking about committing suicide. So we, we learned a lot about that and in doing so because we've had the that number of 22 suicides a day by veterans, mainly now they're seeing it's 55 years old or older. And uh, so it was interesting to start doing these. Part of this group just kind of helps me stay grounded. Without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Shakespeare with Veterans.
coordinator, facilitator, person for Shakespeare with Veterans. We started this group in February with the goal to give veterans another way to get together and learn things about each other, um, to express their emotions and their whatever they're dealing with, whatever they've got going on that day through Shakespeare. This is our fifth performance. So we're, you're going to see four pieces. The first is from The Merchant of Venice. The second is from Hamlet. The third is from Richard III and us. And the, the last is from Henry V. Thank you so much. If it needs nothing else, feed my revenge. Revenge! He has disgraced me, left in my losses, fooled my friends, hidden my enemies, scorned my nation. Then what's his reason? I am a Jew. I am a Jew. Have none of you eyes, hands, organs, feelings, passions? Yes. 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 Are we not fed with the same food? Hurt with the same weapons? Warmed by the same summer? Cooled by the same winter? As a is. is. If you prick us, do we not bleed? Bleed, bleed, bleed. If you tickle us, do we not laugh? Laugh, laugh, laugh. laugh. If you poison us, do we not die? Die, die, die. If you wrong us, Shall we not revenge? Revenge! We are like you in the rest. We will resemble you in that. If a Jew wrong a Christian, revenge! If a Christian wrong a Jew, revenge! If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble you in that. To be or not to be. 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 That, that is what question. Is. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer this slings narrow of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of trouble in my opposing in to die. To sleep. No more. No more. Tis, cons tis consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. No more. Sleep for chance to dream. I heirs grow. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come, must give us pause. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The pains of un of, of despised love. When he himself by his way is made with a bare vodka, what dreams may come? What dreams may come? Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. Currents turn awry and, and lose the name of action. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York. Mission accomplished. Thank, Thank you for your service. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths. Vietnam service ribbon. Bronze star. Purple heart. Thank, Thank you, you for your service. service. Grim digit war has smoothed his wrinkled front. Stand down. Discharge. DD 214. And now instead of mounting Marvin's steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries. F-16. Blackhawk. Dewey. Striker. M1A1. He capers nimbly in the ladies' chamber to the malicious pleasing of a loot. Civilians. They all Subsidized patriotism. War is not over. Send me back. Thank, Thank you for your service. Thank you for coming down here, for sharing in this celebration. I'm the son of a World War II veteran. So many of our citizens have none of that experience and none of that history, or very little of it. But an exhibit like this, which does illuminate uh, another incredibly trying and challenging time in our history, is uh, something that's very, very important. Three, two, one. What happened that day affected the lives not only of those that were there, but of a nation and of the world. Thank you to the Fraser History Museum for celebrating things that matter. We do have to focus on the things that unite us and, and the commonality that we have. Not just uh, this day, but this event and this exhibit also help us do that.
So this week of valor keeps growing for a real obvious reason. Our community in our commonwealth supports veterans. When we have any idea on veterans, all we have to do is put it out there. And all, we are flooded with groups that say, we are here to help. So that is a good feeling when you know that you've got a city and a commonwealth that really supports our veterans. One of the earliest and easiest decisions I made when I came into office in 2011 was uh, starting the Veterans Day Parade. Leading the parade today is the Joint Services Color Guard, presented by the members of the Honor Guard from VFW Post 1170 from Middletown, under the direction of Warrant Officer Mort King. U.S. Army retired. For about 60 years here in Louisville, we didn't have a parade on Veterans Day. But when I became mayor six years ago, one of the first things and one of the easiest things that my team and I decided to do was bring back this parade. It was essential for us to gather the community and say thank you to the people who served and sacrificed for our country in the military. Oh, I think it's great that the city is doing this again. I think it's a comeback and hope it continues. We also have the members of the Fort Knox Audie Murphy Club. Fort Knox chapter of the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club members belong to a nonprofit organization comprised of elite non-commissioned officers committed to leading from the front in both our respective units and our community. Thanks for helping to protect the freedoms we all deeply cherish. With our color guards, we have a grouping of Metro Agency color guards led this year by the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department. They're followed by the Louisville Fire Department, the Metro Department of Corrections, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, and the Emergency Medical Services Group. All of these members serve as volunteers in addition to their regular duties. How does a country pay back these veterans for so much that they've given us? We want to make Louisville the most supportive and responsive community in the country for veterans. And weeks like this and the services that we provide every day are important. Following our color guards, we have Mayor Greg Fisher, his father, George Fisher, who is a jet pilot in the United States Air Force, and Metro employees who are veterans. We're honored to welcome Kentucky Governor Matt Bevan and Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton. We also have George Hawk, the longtime mayor of Schnitzelburg and a World War II veteran, is back with us again this year. Next we have the Robley Rex VA Medical Centers Unit, this year being led by the medical director, Martin Traxler. The Veterans Hospital continues to serve our area with programs and services of all types. We have a tremendous debt of gratitude so to our veterans, to each and every one of you, men and women, young and old, thank you for the service that you have given. Here we go, right? Our sponsors division this year is led, as always, by presenting sponsor Ford Motor Company and UAW 862. Local UAW 862 serves the workers at both Ford Motor Company plants here in Louisville. The Louisville Assembly plant opened in 1955. Ford also operates the Kentucky Truck Assembly plant. Ford Motor Company has a proud history of supporting the military, dating as far back as 1919 when Henry Ford began to hire disabled veterans returning from World War I. A 
lot of the folks in our armed services risk their lives. They went to places, sometimes very dangerous places, and oftentimes far, far, far away from home. Some of them were wounded, and unfortunately and tragically, some of them didn't make it back either. And our veterans did all of this, all of these sacrifices to protect us, each and every one of us here in our country, in our city. <laughs> Next up, we have our Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs. We again salute our women veterans this year, including from the U.S. Navy, Diane Ballinger, Juanita Smith, Robin Stewart, and Julia Hart. From the United States Air Force, we have Melinda Steinheiser. From the U.S. Army, we have Joanne Orr. And from the United States Marine Corps, Carolyn Broich. Joining these ladies is Edith Pitzer, a Navy World War II veteran. We thank them all for their service. Next up, we have two very special gentlemen joining us, our Grand Marshals for 2016. First is Charles Hawker, a survivor of Pearl Harbor. Born in Beaverdam, Kentucky, he enlisted with his childhood friend on June 7, 1941 in Beaverdam. June 27, 1941, he was sent to Hawaii, assigned to the 24th Division, Company L, 21st Infantry Regiment. He will never forget that morning of December 7, 1941 at Schofield Barracks when the Japanese attacked, quickly pulling shrapnel from his legs and running to answer the call to arms. We looked out and saw the smoke from Wheeler Field being attacked. Three of the Japanese planes then headed towards Schofield. It was a surprise. Sunday morning, but on the building next to me, a soldier was firing at them. They flew over and then returned with open fire. You could see the dirt flying as all 12 guns on the planes were firing at the barracks. I, like so many that morning, did not report the first aid. We pulled shrapnel from our body, wiped off the blood, and went to defend our nation. He proudly served his four years. He says, it's not about me, but it's about the awareness and honor of all who have served. Our second Grand Marshal is Frank W. Weaver, one of the last documented original Tuskegee Airmen. Frank is born here in Louisville. He was drafted in 1945 and served two years in the 477 Bomber Group. He was excited when he arrived at Tuskegee and shocked to learn there were black pilots there. He served as an engine mechanic and then was promoted to hangar chief, responsible to get the planes in and out. He left the service as a corporal. He says his most memorable mo moment was when they were sent to head to Japan. Then we got the call, they dropped the big one, so we were canceled. He retired from GE after 32 years and still lives in Louisville, spending his time serving the community and his church. Mr. Weaver also is escorted by Humana employees and members of the Moore High School Air Force Junior ROTC Cadet Corps. All across the country, in town halls, city squares, parades, and places just like this, we celebrate and honor America's veterans for their devotion, patriotism, selfless service and sacrifice on behalf of us all. We join hands in the name of peace and freedom to pay them proper tribute, to say thanks, for it is their loyalty to their country and their own great courage which we have made for us today a beacon of hope in an oft troubled world. Regardless of what military branch our veterans have served, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, this day belongs to all of them just as it belongs to the vast generations of patriots who came before. From the Minutemen who won our independence to today's warriors turning back aggression all around the world, the line of Americans willing to risk their lives for the land and the ideals and people they love is long and never ending. Male or female, I'm just proud that my, my, my child would want to serve our country. She, she's proud. She's proud to be an American. And I love that. My husband was in Vietnam and he got drafted on his 24th birthday. So he was the old man in the group. And um, so he went to Vietnam and 
anyway, he's still alive and kicking. It's just nice, nostalgic. I'm looking for a band. I hope they have an army band here. That's one of my favorite things. By those who came before, the dreams of a nation where freedom would endure. Though work and prayers of centuries have brought us to this day, what shall be our legacy? What will our children say? Let them say of me, I was one who believes in sharing the blessings that I've received. Let me know in my heart when my America, America, I gave my best to you. America, America, I gave my life for you. having a good time today? Are you grateful for your veterans today? Are you glad to be an American today? Awesome. One of the most important reasons why we wanted to bring back this parade was because it's important for you all to be here and understand the importance of our armed forces for our country. I wanted you to hear about the men and women who served and protected our country. In school, you all study history. These men made history. They lived history. And one day, so will you. One day, you'll have choices to make about how you all decide to live your life. We are here to honor our veterans. And so to our veterans, thank you. To all the citizens of Kentucky, it is an honor to serve you. I am grateful. You can expect me to continue to honor our veterans because I have a debt of gratitude to you. It takes special men and women. It takes men and women of conviction, men and women with a servant's heart, men and women who are bold and brave and strong, who are smart, who are willing to serve other people. That's what it takes to be a veteran. The symbol of our national idealism is our national flag of stars and stripes. Beneath its colors, may our nation be wise in the use of our cherished ideals and precious heritage purchased by our veterans. With a blessing, may our nation be blessed forever with righteousness, freedom, and peace.